So first of all, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is... Chicken, all right. Hi, I'm Tom Savini, and you're watching Wow Such Gaming. Your place for zombie and zombie Latin video. You heard him. <laughs> Many people these days believe they can survive a zombie apocalypse, and if there's one thing this channel has covered time and time again, it's that very subject matter. Whether I believe you can survive, or certain ones or not, is completely and usually up in the air. I mean, look at this comment, thinking I'm some sort of mega mind master of proclamation, ultimately deciding the grand population's fate in each video. But if there is one entity out there aiming to prove my why you wouldn't survive's wrong, it would have have to be no not that one and no no not the guy that does be mr beast thumbnail eyes no what if i told you that a much larger entity out there is aiming to prepare us for a widespread zombie apocalypse and that very group is the United States government and military. Here they are recognizing how to fight them, defend against them, keep them at bay, acknowledging how they can spread, and how chickens can turn people vegan, and vegetarian zombies destroying the environment? No, really, that's what's in this. So today we're gonna talk about all of it. This is Con Plan 8888, the real life government plan for a zombie outbreak. Before getting into the meat and potatoes, some may ask the question, what exactly is a con plan or con op? Mostly me, I had to ask the question. Con ops are shortened for concept of operations, being a verbal or written statement to establish strategies, tactics, policies, and constraints for a given situation and how local organizations will take responsibility and delegate for stakeholders for an overall picture of the operation going forward. Think of it like the groundwork for a future system to develop operational and system level requirements. Basically a business plan for field operations with everything taken into consideration. And one of these con ops in particular is centered completely around the idea of a zombie outbreak. Much like a video where someone expresses their opinion on YouTube to make sure no one gets offended or takes things too seriously, the US Strategic Command laid out a disclaimer saying this plan was not actually designed as a joke. You see, it wasn't the idea that zombies coming back from the dead to feast on the living that the government dreaded and feared. They are not preparing for that day. They wanted to make that clear. But instead, it was the idea of an undead outbreak that actually boded well for planning and structuring, especially for younger demographics. During the summers of 2009 and 2010, the US Strategic Command had begun to facilitate a curriculum that could actively engage its training squadron more effectively and with more enjoyment. That accidental change in scenarios made students more willing to work with and explore basic concepts of planning and order development. Beforehand, using fictional conflicts or excursions in places like Tunisia or Nigeria offered varied results. But when the hyperbole of writing a zombie survival plan was brought up, students flocked to the idea. While some would view this exercise as a useless bit of fun, the basic principles of a zombie survival plan allowed them to better explore concepts of plan and order development. The sensationalization of what some might say is, whoa, there's a government plan for zombies? Zombies are real and they're ready for it, it's coming soon. That is not the case here. The plan in its entirety was released to Intellipedia in order to give other planners fun and effective ways to train others. The idea of trying to survive a zombie apocalypse through planning and coordination of resources, people, compounds, and more translates completely well to a plethora of scenarios since zombies themselves can be a low-scale threat over time with implications in biological warfare, post-apocalypse 
apocalyptic areas, and more. If there's something that I covered in my early Why You Wouldn't Survive scenarios, some of them being probably or definitely would survive, when it came to vanilla zombie threats, it always resorted to basic means of survival and keeping a fortified compound day to day. While large-scale threats with destructive capabilities make that nearly impossible, zombie apocalypses, for the most part, boil down to just survival skills, group coordination, and planning how to fight zombies. Save yourself and others, and just the basic necessities. So from the start, this is just an exercise in wide-scale survival that uses zombies as an approachable and recognizable bridge for younger generations. But it also lays out a pretty accurate course of actions for a zombie outbreak. So what overall is in this faux, but not so faux con op? If you want to read the full document for yourself, check the link in the description. I got it there for you to read. Now in the plan summary for con plan 8888, the purpose for this layout isn't much different. Its purpose states that this plan fulfills fictional contingency plan guidance, tasking for US TRACCOM to develop a comprehensive JOPES Level 3 plan to undertake military operations to preserve non-zombie humans from the threats posed by a zombie horde. Because zombies pose a threat to all non-zombie human life, hereby referred to as humans, US TRACCOM will be prepared to preserve the sanctity of human life and conduct operations in support of any human population, including traditional adversaries. The objective of this plan is threefold, starting with A, establishing and maintaining a vigilant defensive condition aimed at protecting humankind from zombies. B, if necessary, conduct operations that will, if directed, eradicate the zombies' threats to human safety. And C, aid civil authorities in maintaining law and order and restoring basic services during and after a zombie attack. Okay, I'm genuinely not gonna lie, a lot of this direct quote sounds like something I would whip together to fill in some time talking about the survival aspects of a lot of my zombie scenarios in my Why You Wouldn't Survives. Now, it then goes on to go over defensive and offensive operations on how to proactively monitor zombie-infested environments and how to respond to them and their zombie conditions, while also offering authorized military capabilities by the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense via methods of denial, deception, disruption, degradation, and or outright destruction to neutralize and render the zombies ineffective. Taking into account how fast zombie outbreaks can happen in most fictional scenarios, mentioning how air and sea travel from Eurasian countries can bring the virus to the US, or even meteorites and nuclear space radiation raining down to convert people at a rapid rate. With this in mind, military action at its highest potential will need to be executed in an overwhelming and unilateral force to try and negate its expansion with the aid of all six phases of military operations. Now, what kind of zombie threats does the US government recognize as realistic and possible in this specific documentation? I will give you a little bit of time. Go ahead and pause the video, we'll play a little game. Can you guess the types of zombies the US government recognizes as potential threats if they came to life one day? Some of these, I'm sure you'll get right off the bat, and there's a couple that... <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a real humdinger, I can tell you that much. Given you enough time, let's get into it. Of course, there are the PZs, or pathogenic zombies, that spread the virus or bacteria via bite or bodily fluids. Then, there are RZs, or radiation zombies, created when an individual is exposed to high levels of particle radiation and or electromagnetic dosages. EMZs, or evil magic zombies, can be people converted via occult experimentation with the ritual evil magic. SZs, or space zombies, can be created from extra terrestrial toxic contamination spread down on the earth via spacefaring life forms or zombies themselves. They can also utilize zombie satellites that unintentionally carry a zombie virus that can occur through an unplanned deep orbit, a reference to the origins of Romero's ghouls. Apparently a case of this occurred in May of 2010 when the Galaxy 15 incident threatened direct TV services. That's actually in the document. I didn't understand what this actually meant. 
WZs, or weaponed zombies, are deliberately created via bioengineering for the sole purpose of war and battle, with documentation specifically mentioning the movie The Crazies, where toxic chemicals were released to turn humans into stark, raving, lunatic zombies. SIZs, or symbiont-induced zombies, are similar to pathogenic zombies, except that a host is exposed to a symbiont life form that converts them without the parasite killing the host, and irreversibly turning them into a zombie even if the parasite is removed from the body or killed. Now these are a majority of the zombies we have seen in popular culture and how they crop up, but there are two classifications that really stuck out like a sore thumb that seemed ridiculous to include for military preparations, but they are there, and hey, it's like they say, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And the first one of these two is VZs, or Vegetarian Zombies. Yep, vegan zombies. This will be the first time I've mentioned this in my channel's seven years of existing, but this document references the zombies of plants versus zombies here, being undead that pose no direct threat to humans, but instead only consume plant life. You know, I barely played the game, but I'm pretty sure the purpose of the OG game was to protect humans from being eaten by the zombies, and that's what a majority of the plants are doing is preventing them from getting eaten. If anything, they're omnivorous zombies, but anyways, yes, vegetarian zombies are on the radar for the U.S. government as the potential threat of them causing massive deforestation and destruction of numerous vital food crops would cause reverberating damage to society and to all forms of life worldwide. They go on to say that this particular branch of the zombie family tree can easily be identified from far away, based on the pure fact that they don't say the usual brains, but instead will say grains. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I was so semi taking this seriously till I saw this reference crop up. Uh -huh. See what I did there? Because they're vegetarian zombies and plants. So yeah, of all the zombie outbreaks on our militarized watch list, plants versus zombies, zombies are in their top 10 most wanted. Guess I should finally do that why you wouldn't survive plants versus zombies now, huh? Also on their top zombie outbreaks to watch out for are CZs or what you could call them as my God! Ch chicken zombies. Yes, poultry of the dead. Citing instances involving an article in 2006 out of California, old hens that could no longer lay eggs are euthanized via carbon monoxide, where their carcasses are left in large piles to decompose in order to be buried. However, some hens have been shown to creep out of these corpse heaps only to just later die of organ failure. What the document poses as a threat from this type of event, I would, I guess you could call it a zombie isn't anything like something we saw in cooties where infected chicken nuggets turn kids into powerful undead nor is it like the fried chicken flu from the boondocks where people were just getting deathly ill from eating chicken nor do the chickens attack people in a feral state and transform them via pecks and scratches into chicken zombie hybrids no that would be too cool or goofy no the threat generates from people seeing this clucked up sight of affairs, from them seeing these mother hens rising from these piles of dead bodies, coming out and then dying suddenly. They are scared of people seeing this and becoming vegetarians in protest. Yep, turning vegetarian from the sight of a zombie chicken needs military intervention involving the President of the United States and Secretary of Defense. I guess they are just that scared of vegetarian zombies cropping up. I'll swallow your soul! 
Now, all of these types of zombies are also noted in their resistances and aversions to certain environmental effects, with pathogenic zombies being noted to have vulnerability to ultraviolet light and sunlight exposure, which may have inspired the infected of dying light. Magic weaponized space and vegetarian zombies are apparently immune to meteorological phenomena, excluding fires, floods, twisters, and tsunamis. The environment also comes into play for uninfected individuals as utilizing rain will be vital for safe and clean drinking water as sources like streams and rivers and reservoirs of groundwater could be potentially contaminated. Also recommending humans to go to structures fit with weather stripping and resisting air currents in the case the zombie virus is airborne or risking radiation seeping into homes and compounds. Taking into consideration the legal ramifications of how the military and US government have to act in most cases of a zombie outbreak is that there will basically be no restrictions on how they can conduct themselves, leading to martial law as militarized forces swiftly attack any zombie or zombie-like entities. These will be conducted in a six-phase plan with defensive and offensive capabilities. Phase Zero Shape will entail conducting zombie awareness training and have a readiness of handling CBRNE or chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive materials while monitoring vectors of zombie contamination and pinpointing the transmission threat, with the offense focusing on conducting normal combat op training alongside hazmat and co-op training. Phase One Deter will establish that the zombies cannot be deterred themselves and to discern if the zombies were created via a pathogens, toxins, or deployed as a large-scale terroristic threat and attempt to negate these elements. Phase 2, Seize Initiative, will recall all U.S. STRATCOM or United States Strategic Command personnel to duty stations and fortify them while distributing CBRNE protection equipment while sending out limited-scale military operations to negate zombie threats. Phase 3, Dominate, leads to all U.S. STRATCOM centers being locked down for 30 days while defenses are strengthened to kill on site as active bomb and missile strikes target sources of zombie infections or infrastructures housing large quantities of them are destroyed. Afterwards, burning all zombie corpses in piles. Phase 4, Stabilize. Recon teams will be deployed to discern the safety of the environment nearby and ensure safety of compounds while further armed resistance snuffs out remaining pockets of zombie incursions. And finally, Phase 5, Restore Civil Authority, personnel will be sent out from U.S. STRATCOM centers to aid surviving civil authorities in disaster zones and re-establish connected law enforcement to finally extinguish remaining zombie holdouts and rekindle humanity. The plan will always work under one or more assumptions about the zombie apocalypse and the zombies themselves at hand. Now, what are these things they must assume or acknowledge? Unlike movies, games, and TV shows that assume that the United States government and everyone else is just completely inept, the U.S. and its allies will actually have the situational awareness to conduct all necessary counter-zombie dominance operations described above. They will acknowledge that zombie forces will only become stronger with each human casualty as they get infected. U.S. and allied forces may degrade as this conflict emerges and progresses, and the laws of armed conflict will not apply to zombies, making them free game to kill and destroy. There will never be a medical cure for a zombie pathogen in the near future, with no hope of being cured and reverted to human status if you are infected. All active firepower shall be focused on the head, or more importantly, the brainstem, since it's universally agreed it's the only way to kill a zombie. The only true way of exterminating a reanimated corpse even even after death is by burning the body, excluding evil magic zombies. If evil magic zombies are a part of the equation, they could be even more deadly to those of atheistic beliefs. I don't understand how evil magic zombies would be stronger against atheists, but that's what it says in the document, so chaplains would need to be deployed alongside armed forces to weaken the power of these evil magic zombies. <laughs> I kick ass for the Lord! <laughs> <laughs>
In order to ascertain the true threats of the zombies at hand, officials will have to study and inquire on popular culture scenarios to better understand these less than intelligent dead. Zombie infected humans that are not fully dead will most likely be immobilized or killed within 30 to 40 days after infection without proper hydration and nutrition. A nod to 28 days later. Riot control measures will not be utilized since zombies typically don't feel pain nor fear death. And for those freshly bitten or infected by a zombie, the drive own self-preservation for each individual would cause a majority of people to conceal their bite wound or source of infection, concealing their imminent zombification. These are just one of many things that has to be assumed by our US government to make sure the zombie apocalypse does not get out of hand. Now, to get more studied up about a zombie apocalypse, basic plans will be widely distributed among government leaders and organization leaders and troops. And this reading material will be highly encouraged among this list here. Now, that's what I call zombie books and zombie-like accessories, including gems like World War Z, The Zombie Survival Guide, and who could omit the piece de resistance, Zombies vs. Unicorns. That's right, our government recommends you read Zombies vs. Unicorns in the case of a zombie or zombie-like outbreak. Other established con ops and guidance will be utilized in conjunction with the zombie threat and con plan 8888. These documents serve as considerable contingency plans for the survival threat posed by zombies and determine what is essential in defending and attacking against them. The reason for reading into sci-fi novelizations gives a better precedent to work off of since no known science offers useful data about zombies, or at least would not be taken seriously until this point. Con Plan 8888 in its documentation would go on to reiterate points on allied forces of the living across the world against all eight classifications of potential zombies that could crop up in the world, including vegans created by chicken zombies, zombies targeting strategic points like human population centers to bolster their numbers while humans establish lines of communications, potable water sources, and maintaining medical, law enforcement, and power distribution infrastructures. The most important factors that led to a decisive point for a zombie apocalypse if it successfully took down humanity would be effective emergency response and quarantine procedures, efficient communications between all branches of emergency services from local to tribal to state to federal level, developing security and safety precautions for the previously mentioned infrastructures, and maintaining evenly distributed threat surveillance and establishing warning programs from there on out. There are mentions that, yeah, we need to keep the healthy number of humans up higher than the infected, which, duh, no-brainer. There's kind of a to-be-continued JoJo moment. The next chapter of this document was never released, and I don't think there's ever going to be any more to this document. It's been over 13 years. But with all this laid out, it's easy to see how an outlandish scenario like the idea of zombies makes for a more interesting read for people like me and those that choose to watch a stupid video like this. Instead of real-world conflicts that most people ignore and centering plans around those, we need to have a fun idea of using zombies for the scenario of chain of command, protocols, and more instead. Funny how we need to be tempted with cannibalistic zombies to engage in plans to ensure survival, safety, and more for real-world people. But you know what? It worked for me. And if there's one thing I've learned to say in Texas... I just don't know if the idea of vegetarian zombies, chicken zombies making people into vegetarians, are really that relatable for an average Joe or something that I could see happening. But you know what? It's still good for a laugh. Still, even then, with how detailed this document is, it's still a strange sense of comfort for zombie apocalypse doomsday preppers like me that the government at least has something to provide for those unaware of the capabilities of the zombie threat. Hell, who knows? Maybe it can come in handy one day if something like this actually happens. There is actual document for the government to look at, and it all started as a 2009 project for students who were just bored and just wanted to be actively engaged in planning for disasters. Who knows? Maybe decades from now. 
the fact of Con Plan 8888 being a joke will be lost to the world. And instead of it just being used to get kids more proactive on military planning, well, this could be dusted off and seen as a perfect stratagem for the world's worst threat in 2109. When the rise of the vegan zombies will be upon us, eating all of our forests, destroying all of our plants, and making it to where we cannot consume, eat the animals that consume the plants, or even breathe the air that we need to survive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, still getting over being sick. But, you know, with that being said, never think something you've made is stupid, because maybe someday in the far future, it could be very well be used as the foundation of something so great, it potentially saves the world. So, what I want you to take as advice right now is go out and create, and know that you could be the key to stopping the zombie chicken uprising, or else we're BOCKED! That scared my cat. I'm sorry. Well, that's this weird but thorough look into the faux government plans for a zombie outbreak. What did you think? Should this be updated? Maybe the government should contract me to update this list. Or actually, don't contract me. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Contact Max Brooks. Should this video never have existed? Or this document? Are you annoyed we have to make up science fiction scenarios just to be more engaged in preparing for conflicts in the real world? Facts can sometimes be stranger than fiction, my friend. Be sure to support the channel by just dropping a like and subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to be featured on this list of tests, subjects, I mean handsome humans, donate to my Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. Every little bit helps. I don't know what's coming up next for a video on the channel, I'm deciding over 10 different ideas, and you know what, a lot in life has been changing for me lately. We just hit 750,000 subscribers, so we're three fourths of the way to that big old million. But stay tuned my dudes, dudettes and in-betweens are not in-betweens. Until next time, I'm Zach Yes, aka Wow Such Gaming. Never forget to stay happy, stay healthy, be prepared, and stay well.